Are you ready to learn about handling null in Kotlin? Kotlin strictly enforces null types. Now for many developers, myself included, this is one of the best parts about the language. Handling null in Java has become quite the chore and leads to many, many of those annoying null pointer exceptions. By Kotlin strictly enforcing null ability on our arguments or our variables, this forces us as developers to think closely about our types and whether or not null actually makes sense or maybe there's a better way to represent a lack of data. In this video, you'll learn about how to declare null and non-null types. You'll learn how to check for those values. And then we'll learn about a few ways which we can work with null values to make our code safer to work with. So let's start off by looking at how we define a null variable. Well, we already know that we define a variable by typing val or var, the variable name, colon, and then the type. So if we wanted a non-null string, it might look something like this. However, if we wanted to change this value to be null, we see that we get this error. If we hover over, we see null cannot be a value of a non-null type string. To change this to accept a null value, you add a question mark to the end of the type of that variable. This applies to variables. It applies to function parameters. This is how Kotlin differentiates between a null and non-null type. Now let's try using a null type. So again, we could say val username equals user dot get username. You notice here that username is defined as a nullable string. And in this case, this expression is totally fine because type inference will automatically assign username to be a nullable string. So now let's pass username into our greet user function. We could say greet user and pass in username. However, again, we're seeing this error here, type mismatch, required a non-null string, found a nullable string. So if we can't guarantee that this username will be non-null, we could modify the greet user function to take a nullable string type. By adding the question mark here, we've now indicated that the greet user function can accept null as a type. If we pass null in here, that argument value is still accepted. So now within greet user, how might we handle this? Well, we could check for null the old fashioned way using a simple if conditional. We could say if username equals null, print line, there we go. So now we've handled null in this way and we could go on down here to print out the username if we have it. So this would be perfectly acceptable. So how else could we accomplish this? Well, we could create a local variable. We'll call it name to print. And we could assign the value based on this check. So we could say equals if username does not equal null, then we'll use the value of username else no username. And then we can print out name to print. So this will first use the conditional to check for null. And if it's not null, it'll go ahead and use the value. However, we could also use something called the Elvis operator here. So we could say username and then followed by the Elvis operator which is question mark colon, and then no username. So this is essentially equivalent to that last conditional that we saw. We will try and assign the value of username first, but if the left-hand side of the Elvis operator evaluates to null, then we will substitute in the value on the right-hand side. So this is really convenient way of providing optional values here for a possibly null value. 
Maybe we only want to print out the username if it's not blank. So how might we handle that? Well, we could say username dot is empty to check, but notice we then get the little error line here that says only safe or non-null asserted calls are allowed on the nullable receiver. Basically what this is saying is you can't safely call the is empty function because username might be null. And then that would lead to all kinds of nasty errors. So what we can do here is what's called a safe call. We can proceed the period with a question mark. What this does is say only call is empty if username is not null. Another way that you could possibly address this is by saying exclamation exclamation period. What this will do is again run is empty if it's not null, but throw an exception if it is null. So this is a much more drastic version of the last case we saw. This is a non-safe validation that username is non-null and should really only be used in very specific circumstances where you really can't recover and you wanna know immediately if that value is not there. Now maybe you want to check that the value exists and then do multiple things. Well, you could use one of the scoping operators and call that only if the value is non-null. And then within here, we could print out that value. We could check the length. We could do whatever we want because within this scope right here, the value will be guaranteed to be non-null. So you see, there's really a number of ways of working with null in Kotlin. One of the whole benefits to the language is the fact that it explicitly differentiates between the null and non-null types and requires us to really think about how we're going to handle those differences. And then it provides a number of tools to make that easier for us.